So Newtonian mechanics includes the material that we've been looking at, the equations of motion. Um, it's basically the field of mechanics developed by mostly by Newton uh, in the 1600s and something. Um, and it works well. in everyday situations. Such as movie clips. Movie clip action scenes, let's say. Movie clip action. Okay. Yeah. That's how you spell it. So, um, okay, so it works really well in regular situations like in this classroom. Um, so what do I mean by Newtonian mechanics? Well, Newtonian mechanics basically I'm going to write down some equations which you haven't seen yet but will develop in the class. It's just to give you an idea of what Newtonian mechanics is. So it's things like F equals MA, which we'll talk about. So you won't know, might not know what this is yet. I'm going to go through it. You don't need to know it right now, just to give you an idea. Uh, kinetic energy is a half MV squared. That's another equation of Newtonian mechanics. Um, another one could be uh, force of gravity is big G M1 M2 over R squared. So I don't, as I say, I'm not, you don't need to know what these are yet. We will do them in the class and it'll make sense to you later on. But there are basically equations developed by, principally by Newton, which describe the world and how the world works, how the physical world works. And these are, these are the type of equations. Gravity, F equals MA. Kinetic energy is a half MV. We also would have momentum is MV. So all of these equations just kind of littered over here. This is all, these all fall into an area called Newtonian mechanics. And it works well in regular situations, but it fails at the extremes. Fails at the extremes. I, I just, I'm my style. Okay, so what are the extremes? In extreme situations, Newtonian mechanics doesn't work. Uh, we'll actually look at these extreme situations. One is very small. If things are really, really small, what do we mean by small? I mean basically the size of an atom. The atom, which is about 10 to the minus 9 meters that type of scale. And when you get into the world that's really small, Newtonian mechanics is replaced by another branch of physics. Can anybody, do anyone want to take a guess what that might be? It's another type of mechanics. Yeah, quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics. Now, quantum mechanics can explain everything in the really small world, but it can also explain everything in the classical world. So this quantum mechanics is a, a, a theory, if you like. It was able to replace Newtonian mechanics because it can explain, it basically reduces to Newtonian mechanics when things get big. But it also works when things are really small. Now, Newtonian mechanics doesn't work when you get down to atomic sizes. Things go really weird, as you'll see. When you get down to the scale of an atom, things are quantized. That's what the word quantum means. It means bits. So, you know, like zeros and ones, if you like. So there's been 
There was a movie called The Matrix, right? And um, if you actually look at the microphysical world and reduce everything down to the size of an atom, you end up getting quantized. You do actually end up with bits, ones and zeros, basically, at an, at an atomic level. Everything is quantized. So maybe there's something in it. I don't know. So the equations of quantum mechanics we'll talk about. So you'd have something like E equals HF, where H is Planck's constant. I'll write that here. And F is the frequency. So you're not going to know what that is yet, okay? I'm, producing, I'm right throwing stuff out here that you don't know about, but that's okay because we are going to talk about this later on in the class. This is not going to be in our homework until the last homework. But I just want to show you that there are equations that work in the quantum world and they look different than the equations that we see in the, real, in the classical world, the size of this classroom. So in the classical world, you might have kinetic energy as a half mv squared. But in the quantum world, it becomes E equals HF, which is, means that the energy is it's quantized. So you have equations which work in the quantum world, and at the, at the, when you scale them up, they work in the classical world, but Newton, New, Newtonian mechanics doesn't actually work when things get really small. So that's one of the extremes. I mean, basically, this quantum mechanics basically explains chemistry. All of chemistry, pretty much. Uh, chemistry is the physics of, of electrons, right? So if you understand what electrons do, then I guess you can understand chemistry. So another, the other extreme is basically when things get really big. Number two. Or very dense. So this could be galaxies, or black holes. And when things get really big, or really dense, at this extreme, Newtonian mechanics gets replaced by another theory. Any, any, anyone want to guess that one? Relativity. Yep, general theory of relativity. So when you get really big, or if you come near black holes, Newton, basically what happens is Newtonian mechanics gets replaced by the general theory of relativity. And physicists are actually still trying to figure out a theory which can account for that and for that. And they, don't actually, they haven't actually got there yet. That's one of the um, big questions that's out there that they're trying to solve. I think there's there's a million dollars or something like that. There are these 10 questions, basically, and if you can solve them, you get a prize. And one of them is unification. And that would be to come up with a theory which unifies all of them. Right now, we have quantum mechanics at the size of an atom, and we have general relativity when the gravitational fields are really strong. We don't actually have a theory which works for both. The third one, the third exception, if you like, Okay, so number three is when you get very, very fast. And by very fast, we mean approaching the speed of light, which is super duper fast. So the speed of light, which is about 186,000, excuse me, miles per second. which is about 10 times around the Earth in one second. It's fast. And when you get really, really fast, you end up with, you have to replace it with another theory. Somebody else want to tell me what that theory is? It's a bit tougher, I guess. Anybody? <laughs> it sounds like this one. 
Anyone else? It's the something theory of relativity. Special? It's a special theory of relativity. So when you get really fast, your Newtonian mechanics gets replaced by the special theory of relativity. which has totally bizarre consequences. One being the most, I mean, some of the surprising consequences of special theory of relativity is that when you go really fast, that time moves at a different rate. So you get things like time dilation. So if I'm running really, really fast and you see me running and I run out the room around the block and come back, and if I get close to the speed of light, when I come back, uh, I, could, I might have aged 10 minutes and you could be, you know, 20 years older. That kind of weird kind of, something that sounds like a paradox, but it's not. Um, so that all comes out of the special theory of relativity. So this theory explains when things go really fast. The general theory of relativity is typically is a theory about gravity and acceleration when things get really big. And an equation for this one, we could say E equals mc squared, which you've probably heard of, right? That would come out of special theory of relativity. OK. <coughs> all right, but anyway, for today, I want to talk about Newton's Newtonian mechanics. So all of the stuff I'm going to talk about for the next few classes is all going to be on Newtonian mechanics. So we're not going to worry about really big. We're not going to worry about things going speed of light. We're not going to worry about things being at the size of an atom. We're going to be in the regular world, the, reg the world of 1 meter, 10 meters, 20 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, regular speeds, OK? But this is just to give you an idea that the theory doesn't work at these extremes.